Hello and welcome to this video on the JFET voltage controlled resistor circuit. A JFET is a type of transistor. It has three terminals. If we apply a certain amount of voltage to the input terminal, the gate, we can get the drain and the source, the other two terminals, to behave like a resistor. In this video we're going to go over how we can get this JFET transistor to act like a variable resistor with a controlling input voltage. We're viewing the output of this JFET circuit. Notice how the amplitude of the output signal, which is yellow, varies with the input signal, which is purple. There's a linear relationship between our controlling input voltage and how much we increase and decrease the output voltage. Let's take a look at the JFET. In this video, I'm using an in-channel JFET transistor. The three terminals are the gate, the drain, and the source. To understand the JFET in this application, we need to make the assumption that the drain and the source currents are equal. We also need to understand that the controlling voltage is the voltage applied across the gate and the source. This gate source voltage needs to be negative with respect to the source. In this application, I'm going to ground the source, meaning that we need to have a negative gate to source voltage because ground is at zero volts. Let's take a look at the behavior of the output as we vary this gate to source voltage. The measurements being displayed are the DC value of the gate to source voltage, so what controlling voltage we're applying and the output. When I probe the gate to source voltage, I'm adding a little noise to the circuit, so that's why we're seeing it now. With the small gate to source voltage, we see that the output is severely attenuated. The input signal is a 1 volt peak to peak sine wave. We are measuring a 60 millivolt peak to peak output. So the most attenuation happens, the resistance is lowest when we have a gate to source voltage that is close to zero. As we decrease the gate to source voltage, the output amplitude begins to increase. Our resistance seen from the drain to source is increasing. We reach a maximum of about 700 millivolts peak to peak. At a certain gate to source voltage, we see we are no longer linearly related. This JFET is no longer acting as a resistor. We are in the JFET's saturation region. The transition point between the linear and saturation is called the pinch-off voltage. Here we're transitioning from the saturation to the linear region. The pinch-off voltage for this particular transistor is about minus one volt. And if we decrease further from that, we're in the saturation region, and voltages between the pinch off and zero, we're in the linear. Now that we understand the linear region of this JFET transistor, let's take a look at the circuit. Here's a simplified schematic. We have the input signal connected to R1, which is an input resistor connected to the drain of the JFET. We also have the negative gate to source voltage. To simplify the analysis, we could think of this as a voltage divider, where R1 is that input resistor, and R drain to source is the resistance seen at the two terminals of the output of that JFET. The output voltage equation is the input times the resistance of the drain to source over the resistance of the drain to source plus R1, that input resistor. When RDS is small, our amplitude value is small. And when it increases, our output amplitude increases. So as the drain to source resistance increases, our voltage output will also increase. We can use the measurements seen previously to figure out what is the effect of resistance of the drain to source. We are now looking at the smallest value of the drain to source resistance. If we plug in the appropriate values, 60 millivolts peak to peak, 
one volt peak to peak input and R1 to be 6.7 kilo ohms, which was used in the circuit, we get the resulting resistance of the drain to source to be 428 ohms. Following the exact same steps and procedures, we get the resistance of the drain to source maximum being 15.6 kilo ohms. Because we plugged in the minimum and maximum output voltages, we now know the full range of the resistance of the drain to source given this circuit configuration. We can dial in specific resistance values given appropriate gate to source voltages that are within the linear region. Here's the circuit that was actually used on the breadboard. Notice that there are two 100 kilo ohm resistors and one connects from the drain to the gate. These resistors increase the linear region and introduce feedback into the transistor. Here's the actual circuit under test on the breadboard. One op amp buffers the input signal and the other buffers the controlling gate voltage. The JFET is in the center of the circuit. Thank you for watching this video on the JFET voltage controlled resistor circuit. Stay tuned for more content and let me know what you think in the comment section.